Good morning. It is always good to be with you, uh, maybe not in person, but in, by heart. And we just want to, you to know that we are certainly uh, interested in your welfare and hope everything is going well for you. We know the virus is really affecting a lot of people today, and, and we just want to pray for each one of them. Uh, among our members, we have uh, two or three that are seriously ill that we want to remember in our prayers. We want to remember Ron Pruney uh, and his situation, uh, Willie Johnson and Lester Gowding. We pray that these are on your heart uh, continuously and that you remember them in, in your prayers. But right now we want to give special honor to our medical staff, our doctors and nurses, and those that are serving those that are ill, uh, our responders and uh, the people that serve the elderly in our nursing homes. We uh, are concerned about them and we're hearing about those that are uh, struggling with the virus continually, uh, those who are placing themselves uh, in harm's way, uh, caring for the ill. And we want to remember them uh, in our prayers. So let's begin today with a word of prayer, and then we will look into God's Word. Let's pray together. Gracious Father, we're so thankful today for your presence in our life, for the fact that you are with us every day, and you care for us, and we know that you're the great physician, and you can care for those uh, who are ill. We pray for those uh, among us that are suffering, uh, we are thankful that they're not uh, suffering from the virus, but they have other serious illnesses, and, and we certainly uh, pray, pray for, for them. Uh, we just are thankful for our doctors and nurses. We're just impressed with their ability to serve the ill, and we just pray that you will keep them free from the virus and keep them, uh, them healthy. We pray for our church family. We know that we are dealing with a difficult uh, situation in our world today, and we know that uh, we can depend on you uh, to help us uh, deal with these situations. But just help us today to be uh, loving and kind and caring for those who are uh, in need today. We know a lot of people uh, have lost their jobs and, and are suffering uh, for a lack of income, but we just pray, dear Father, that you'll bless the church as we try to uh, take care of the needy, feed them, and care for them in a special way in, in our area. Bless our efforts, and bless the message of the day, and help us always to serve you faithfully. In Jesus' name we pray, uh, and amen. About three weeks ago, we began a series studying the first two verses of the 12th chapter of the book of Romans. We reread that, that, those verses today uh, for emphasis. The Apostle Paul writes, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We divided this, uh, these verses into three different areas. Number one, we talked first of all about presenting our bodies a holy living sacrifice. That is a charge for all of us, and we certainly need to take it seriously. The second aspect of this message is that that living sacrifice needs to be acceptable to God. There can be sacrifices that we make today that not necessarily are acceptable to God, but we want to be accepted of God. This is a theme of the Apostle Paul in his writings. As I read the book of Romans, the book of 2 Corinthians, Ephesians, and 1 Timothy, the Apostle Paul is going to use this phrase reference this idea of being accepted of God more than 20 times. Evidently, in his mind, it was very uh, important. I suggest to you that we can live a good life. 
we can do a lot of good things. We can even worship him in many ways. That does not mean that we are accepted uh, of, of him. It is important then that we spend this time today thinking about what it means to be accepted of God. I have listed some seven passages from the Apostle Paul that emphasize this message. We reread again Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. The Apostle Paul says we need to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. God thinks it's reasonable that we would endeavor to be accepted of him. In chapter 14, verse 18, the Apostle Paul, as he talks about helping the weak brother and making absolutely sure that we do not def offend our weak brother, weaken his faith, that we are responsible in serving him and strengthening his faith, the Apostle Paul ends that verse by saying, for he who serves Christ in these things is accepted of God and approved by man. To be accepted of God is important. And that's what I think we need to focus on as we think about our relationship with him. Uh, in Romans chapter 15, verse 16, the Apostle Paul was talking about his ministry, the goal of his ministry, the purpose of his ministry. And he simply says that, uh, he does not want uh, his good to be evil spoken of. And then he says, for this, for he who serves Christ in these things is accepted of God and approved by man. Isn't it wonderful that we can be accepted of God? Our life, our worship, our service can be accepted of God. Going to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 9 the Apostle Paul talks about the struggles we have in life. We live in an earthly tabernacle. And one of these days, this earthly tabernacle is going to be done away. But we have a building with God. And we are struggling, laboring every day to be able to, be, to obtain that building of, of, of God. And then he says uh, in, in verse uh, 9, Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, we can be accepted of God. That's the King James Version. The New American Standard Version says that we can be well-pleasing to God. So therefore, to be accepted of God, we please Him, and He is pleased uh, with us. In chapter 6 of 2 Corinthians, verses 1 and 2, he talks about the need to be serious about our salvation. And he says, now is the accepted time. Now is the time, the day of our salvation. There is an accepted time for us to think about our salvation. And the Apostle Paul was certainly concerned about our salvation. Going to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 12, the the Apostle Paul continues to write, For if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what one does not have. He's talking about this contribution that is being made by the churches of Corinth uh, for the needy saints in Jerusalem. And he says that uh, this is accepted of God, that we sacrifice to help our fellow man in, in every, every way. The last passage that we want to reference is 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. And this is a negative uh, scripture. He says, if someone comes to you and preaches another Jesus, uh, another gospel, another spirit, then that is not accepted of God. And we cannot put up with that. There is sometimes uh, the situation that we need to not accept what is being taught and what is be being done. 
I, I read these scriptures simply to emphasize the fact that God accepts his people. God accepts their life, their service, their worship. And to be accepted of God uh, is a great, great blessing that we're able to achieve uh, in, in life. There are two applications of this principle that I'd like to share with you. First of all, our obedience to the gospel. Obedience is absolutely essential. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 8, the apostle writes, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of salvation to all those who obey him. Jesus died on the cross and offered, his, offered salvation. His grace is offered to all of us when we obey him. That gives us some responsibility, some grave responsibility. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, the, the apostle is trying to instruct the congregation in Thessalonica that the Lord is going to return. And the Lord, when he returns, he's going to punish those with everlasting destruction for the presence of the Lord and the glory of his power when he comes to be uh, glorified with his saints uh, in, in those days. There's two groups of people, he says, that are going to be punished uh, in that day. First of all, those who do not know God. And secondly, those who do not obey the gospel. Obedience of the gospel is absolutely essential to our salvation, and we need to remember that continually. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, our Lord himself makes these statements. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will come to me in that last day and say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Uh, have we not cast out demons in your name? And have we not done many wonders in your name? And then Jesus says, I will declare to them, I never knew you depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Just preaching, just serving, just worshiping in our own way is not sufficient to please God and to uh, honor him and be accepted of him. We must do his will. It is easy, and here's the point that I want to make. It's easy for us to obey the what we think is the commands uh, uh, of the Bible. We think that we are right because we do some things that is authorized by, by Scripture. In the Old Testament, God's people became unacceptable. They, what well, you read the book of Leviticus, and you begin to keep in mind all of the commands that were given to the people of Israel. We become very, very confused as we read all of these commands. The rabbis of the Old Testament tried to make it simpler for the people, and so therefore they codified these laws. There were 613 laws that they understood that person had to obey. What happened was that people began to think that there were certain laws that were more important than others. Their sacrifices, the circumcision, and, and their feast days and what have you. And the people began to observe those laws uh, as a ritual. And they become meaningless in, in their life as far as drawing them closer to God. And we can do that today. We can obey what we believe are laws of God. And at the same time, not have a relationship with God. We can come to worship every Sunday. We can read our Bible. Uh, we can do good for others. But not have a real, heartfelt, sincere relationship with God. And so let me suggest to you, to be approved of God, we must not only obey ritualistically the laws that we think or the commands that we think God has given us, but we need to build a relationship with God. I had a good friend years ago 
uh, a fine, fine Christian. He worked hard for the church. He did a lot of good work, and, and I'm not in any way throwing any disparaging words toward him, but you would ask him, John, why do you go to church on Sunday? And he would say, well, I don't want to go to hell. Why do you read your Bible every day? Because I don't want to go to hell. Why do you do all this good work for others? Because I don't want to go to hell. Well, let me suggest to you that we can have a false motivation in what we do. It's all right that we understand the terrible situation uh, of those who will end up in hell. But we need to worship God and serve God because we love him. It's like a, a man, a husband. Uh, that serves his wife because he doesn't want to pay alimony. There's got to be a deeper reason why he serves his wife and why he's faithful to his wife rather than to the fear of being lost or paying alimony. So let me suggest to you that we need to obey God from the heart, not from just the law its, itself. The second application, as we hurry along uh, this morning, uh, is involving our worship. Why do we worship? What do we get out uh, uh, of worship? We know that Jesus said the hour is coming, and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4, verse 23 and, and 24. Christians worship God faithfully, while others worship God for false motives. They worship God because they have been taught uh, in the early years of their life that they need to worship. But they fail to see the significance uh, of, of, of worship, you see. Worship itself is so powerful, so influencing in, in our life. And it's hard for us to understand why there are some people who do not see the need to worship. They do not see a need to develop a relationship with God. It may be because they don't believe in God at all. It may believe that the world was formed through an evolutionary process and God was not involved but we as Christians who understand the will of God, we know that God is the great creator. God is the great God of heaven. And he is in control of everything that happens in this universe. You see, control of our life. And if I am a man of prayer, I need to understand that my prayer is only as effective as my faith in God is. And so I worship God by faith. I serve him by faith. And I certainly want to serve him correctly. In the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, again going to the words of the Apostle Paul, we, we see that here was a group of people uh, that were worshiping. And he's saying to them, uh, I understand that you, when you come together, it's not for the better, but for the worse. He says that when you come together, uh, you partake of the Lord's Supper. We call it the communion service. And we realize that when we eat the bread and drink the cup, we uh, show uh, the Lord's death until he comes. But... If a person eats the bread and drinks the cup, the fruit of the vine, in an unworthily manner, he is guilty of the blood and the body of Christ. It's serious to think that I can come to worship and I can go through the rituals of worship and at the same time be guilty of the blood and the body of Christ. He, he says in verse 29, he who eats and drinks in no worthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the body of Christ. The King James Version says that we eat and drink condemnation to ourselves. And then in verse 30, he says, For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. 
To be sick spiritually today is to be unacceptable to God. And what the Apostle Paul is saying, that when we worship, if we do not have the right heart, if we do not have the right spirit, if we do not have the right mind, we can eat and we can drink uh, from the Lord's Supper, the fruit of the vine, or uh, the communion service, and be guilty of the body and blood of Christ. That's serious. And we need to be very careful. In Acts chapter 17 is a good example of this. The Apostle Paul had come to the city of Athens. And he says, as I was observing your rituals, your worship, your service, I saw that you worship many gods. You're very, very religious. And as I passed through your city, I con considered the object of your worship. And I found that you worshiped the unknown God. The God that you do not know that you don't understand, I'm going to present to you. It, he is the God that made he, uh, the world and everything in it. Uh, he does not dwell in temples made with hands, but he is worshipped, not with man's hand, but from the heart. And then he says in verse 30, Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands every man everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained and has given him assurance of this to all, raising him from the dead. Let me suggest to you that God is aware of our worship. God is aware of what we worship. And we need to keep in mind as we worship what it means to be accepted of God. Just because we're worshiping does not mean that we are accepted of God. There are many things that have been introduced into worship in the religious world today. These things have been introduced because they're pleasing to man without ever accepting or even considering the fact that are they accepted of God. One of the great well, rules that we need to follow in, in, in our worship. And I don't like to call them rules. They're, they're just practices that we have accepted is that everything we do in worship, everything we do in life, everything we do in obedience to the gospel, we need to keep in mind, is this accepted of God? If God accepts it, then it's okay. But if God does not accept it, then we should not be practicing it. And we can learn from the scriptures what God accepts and what he does not accept. And to worship unacceptably to God is going through a service that means absolutely nothing to our life. In fact, it is the very thing that will lead us away from God. Now, there's two or three things that I think we need to consider in closing to say it today. Number one, is my heart right in the sight of God? When I come to worship, do I really diligently work to make sure that the worship is meaningful in my life? Am I worshiping God in the Spirit? Jesus said that those who worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The truth is revealed in God's Word, and it's very simple for us to understand. The Spirit, then, is involved in what we are doing from the heart. We just sit, don't come together and sing songs. We come together to worship. And we sing these hymns, uh, these spiritual songs uh, from the heart, really with God in mind. And when we practice, uh, partake of the Lord's Supper, we spend this time not in worldly activities, but we spend this time focusing our minds and our hearts on the sacrifice that Jesus offered on the cross. Worship is important. Serving God is important. But it's only important as we realize that we are accepted of God. To be accepted of God is to be owned by God, is to be blessed by God and is to be 
blessed in a way that we know that our salvation is true and, and we are pleasing God and God will bless us with a home in heaven. It is our prayer that everything that you do, everything that you th really think is ap approved of God. And God approves your life, approves mine. And as he says in Romans chapter 1, that that spiritual sacrifice that we make is accepted of God. It's holy. It's sanctified. And it is right with God. Thank you for listening today. Pray that this has been a blessing to you and to your family. Until we can meet again, we pray God's blessings on you.